Hello, insiders. News flash time. First item: uh, the option to use the classic upload flow will start to be removed very gradually. I think we're starting with about one percent. As you may recall, the new upload flow. The number one complaint about it was that it was not possible to do bulk uploads. And now that has been added, we've been getting great feedback, so we're getting ready to retire the classic uploads flow. So if you have any feedback on that new uploads flow, let us know in the comments below. But so far we've been hearing pretty good feedback and we're pretty excited about uh, its improved reliability over the classic uploads flow. Next, a long-standing feature request that we've been hearing for years is to make it easier to know when your channel's audience is online at YouTube. Uh, obviously, if you're trying to schedule a premiere or a live stream, knowing if there's a certain day of the week or time of day when they're not online to avoid those kind of cold spots uh, could be useful. Actually, we did a sneak peek about that feature a few weeks ago and we started rolling it out very gradually, but now it's available to all 100% of creators, so check it out. Super cool feature, uh, might help you as you plan when to make your content, especially if it's live content, available to your audience. As a reminder, if you're scheduling a regular video upload, uh, like a video on demand, that one you may not need to worry as much about publish time since the long-term performance has not been proven to be related to uh, what day or time of week a video is uploaded, but certainly if you're doing a live stream or a premiere, something uh, to keep in, in mind. Next, as a reminder, we're continuing to roll out the optional setting that holds potentially inappropriate comments for review as the default for channels to help creators manage uh, their comments at scale and improve the quality of the conversations on your channel. Uh, we plan to finalize this rollout in the next few weeks You'll see a message in YouTube Studio when the setting has been enabled for your channel. Uh, this setting is available to all channels already. You can turn it on or off at any time with the instructions that are linked below. Uh, when we first launched this feature, enabled channels experienced a 75% drop in flagged comments. And over the past two years, We've had teams focus on expanding the feature to cover 13 languages as well as improve accuracy. Uh, link below for more information about this important uh, hold potentially inappropriate comments feature. Next, YouTube has removed live DVR capabilities from HTML5 in iOS, mainly mobile web. This means that a user will no longer be able to seek backwards during a live event on those devices. You know, the goal is to deliver the best playback experience possible, and this functionality sees very low usage and adversely affects other core features of the YouTube live playback experience, so we've chosen to retire it for the moment. Next, scheduling community posts is now available on the desktop web main app. This launch allows creators to draft community posts ahead of time and specify that future publishing date. It has been requested quite a bit, so thank you for all the feedback. We heard you and the team has launched that feature. Next, you may recall back in early April, we were part of an experiment around video chapters. You may have even spotted them on Creator Insider news flashes, including this one. Uh, we've seen a lot of positive creator and viewer feedback. So we want to let you know how to opt in to this feature as everyone will be getting access in a few weeks. So some details. All you have to do is ensure that if you have these timestamps in your description, make sure that the first timestamp listed in the video description starts at zero colon zero zero and that your video has at least three timestamps or chapters with each chapter being 10 seconds or longer. You can just look in the description below to see how we do it if that doesn't make any sense. Now, if for some reason you use timestamps in your description but you don't like our chapter feature where we kind of make it easier for viewers to jump and visualize it, you can disable it. You can basically opt out 
And all you need to do is adjust the first timestamp in your video description to be something other than 0.00. For example, you could just change it to 0.01. And that will indicate to us that, hey, this video doesn't want the chapter feature uh, enabled. Um, and you'll just kind of appear like you've done in old school uh, mode. If you have questions or feedback about that feature, please leave it in the comments below. Uh, we'll be sharing it with the team. And lastly, this week's Newsflash Trivia. Uh, first, let's acknowledge last week's winner or winners. The question, as a reminder, was if you wanted to get a sense of a channel's reach, the size of its total audience, what metrics would you look at? And the hint was that subscriber count, while it is uh, very easy to remember and very visible and something we all know and, and think about, uh, is actually not the best measurement of your channel's actual audience. Um, for a variety of reasons, there are better metrics. And there were two potential answers. One was, okay, uh, let's say you don't have access to that channel's YouTube analytics. You're just like a main app, like just a viewer looking at someone else's channel. The first person to guess correctly in that case was Awesome Wood Things. And the answer was views. So if you look at a channel and you look at their last few videos and you look at typically how many views they get, um, that's generally a much better indicator of the reach and how many people are kind of actively watching this channel's content than the subscriber count. Um, the next is what if you do have access to internal metrics? You do have access to the YouTube analytics for your channel. What number or metric would you look at to get a sense of the reach of your channel? And the first person to guess that was fully involved media group. And the answer is unique viewers, which is a metric we launched a couple years ago, um, but many people may not know about it. So if you go to YouTube Studio and you go to Analytics and then you go to Audience, uh, you'll see a unique viewers metric. And if you just say like the last 28 days, that's pretty much the best indication of the general order of magnitude size of your audience, which in some cases is actually bigger than the sub count. Some cases not, but that's really uh, a very good way to think about the size of your audience. Okay, so congrats to both Awesome Wood Things and Fully Involved Media Group. With that, I'll just say goodbye and keep it real.